Today in this old trailer, we're going to replace the hydraulic brakes with electric brakes. Basically, it's going to be a matter of taking off the tires, removing the hubs, go ahead and removing the backing plates, and draining the hydraulic lines of the fluid, and then go ahead and bolting on the new brakes. So we'll start off obviously with taking the wheel off. <laughs> Okay, we'll go ahead and remove the dust cover here. It's an easy lube spindle, so this has a tang washer that we need to push back down so we can unlock the castle nut. It's right here. Let's push it back down. And we should be able to take the hub right off. Next task is to go ahead and disconnect the hydraulic lines. We've got that disconnected, now we need to pull the clip out so we can release this part here. And that's this little piece of metal right here, you can just pry out. Alright, now we can unbolt this at the back of the hydraulic backing plate. Alright, now we can unbolt the backing plate from the flange on the axle. Now we're down to our bare axle and clean it up a little bit and then reinstall the brakes. Before we put on our brake, we're going to cover which way it goes. Now it says on here right side, which is also the passenger side, but if you don't have a sticker or it's messed up, this bow right here, think of it as an arrow that points to the front always. And let's go ahead and flip it over. Got the wires, we'll go ahead and put our wire holder, it just loops over and pushes into place. Keeps it out of the way so it doesn't get smashed in the plate there and we'll go ahead and wire these up in a little bit. I'm gonna slide it on because it has existing studs and a magnet also points to the bottom always. Before we actually bolt it down, you might want to take a test fit and make sure you have enough room for the, the lock nut and washer when you put it together. If you don't have room for it, you can get by by using just the nut, but it might be a good idea to go ahead and use some Loctite on there to help ensure it, it stays on. And we're gonna be using part number LT37643. All right, now this Loctite material, what it does, it basically locks the nut onto the bolt, and what happens is it stays in this pliable state right now, but as soon as you run the nut down onto it, it this air squeezes out, starts hardening up, and basically turns into a, like an inside lock nut. And you can also easily undo it with basic common hand tools too. So let's go ahead and install our brake assembly, and we'll go ahead and install the nuts. And also nice about the Loctite, it makes it a little bit more easier to thread on. Once you get everything snug down, torque them down about an eighth of a turn, that should be just fine. Now we got two wires coming out of the backing plate. Now we're gonna ground one of them, and then since it's a magnet, it doesn't care which one, as long as one goes to secure ground. So we're gonna put a ring terminal on the end and put it about right here. That way you have plenty of room for the wire to go up and down as the suspension goes up and down. We'll go ahead and run this wire back up to the front at a later point. Let's go ahead and reinstall our original hub. We can reuse the original hub because it has a flat surface on the inside and that's where our magnet will ride against this. So all we have to do really is just inspect the seal, make sure it's in good shape, and if there's any doubt whatsoever, go ahead and replace the seal. We'll go ahead and clean this one up and inspect it and then we'll replace it if necessary. And at that point, we can go reinstall the hub. Push our hub back into place, make sure your bearing's seated. All right, we'll go ahead and pop on a new tang washer. So it was a good idea to replace it just like a cotter pin. And reinstall a castle nut. Then we'll run this down until it stops. Kind of rock it back and forth a little bit. Spin the hub a little bit, make sure everything's seated. And run down until it stops and then back off to the next notch, whichever you can use one of the tabs on a tang washer for. And then just bend it back down. And then we can reinstall the dust cap. And we're going to be using a special tool for that. That's going to be part number 290-991. Let's get it started. Tap it into place to hold it. Put a tool over it and then just tap it into place. All right, now we're going to go ahead and adjust our brakes. We're going to pop off one of the covers here so we can see the adjustment dial on the inside. 
or you use a brake adjusting tool available at any auto parts store. And basically what we're gonna do is adjust it until we can lock it up and keep spinning the hub. Until you can't do it by hand anymore. Once you can't move it by hand anymore, go ahead and back it off about 10 clicks. Okay, one hub is complete. Now we'll go ahead and do the same thing for three more. All right, now if all our hub assembly is installed and grounded, we'll go ahead and run our power wire. Now we're gonna use a 10 gauge wire to run from the front to the back. We're gonna follow the original line where the brake line used to go to make things easy. Now we ran our wire from the front, we're going to the back wheel right here, and we're gonna make our permanent connection to this one wire. And then from this main blue wire, we're gonna make our jumpers to the rest of our hubs. We're just gonna use a buck connector to make our first connection here. Now our other wire is gonna be a lot thinner gauge, obviously, so you wanna make sure you tighten it up real tight and maybe fold it over, get a little more grip on it that way too, and then crimp it down. All right, now that's our first connection. Now we'll make a jumper from this wire and go over the other side of the axle for the other brake assembly. All right, we'll make our same connection as we did before. All right, now let's go back to our original wire and make our connection there. And now we're gonna make our connection here. Now you have a variety of connections you can make. You can use a, a wire nut, you can solder. But in this case, we're gonna use a scotch lock. Let's design for this size wire, so we'll be good to go there. We got our back axle done. Let's go ahead and go to the front axle and repeat the same process. And we're gonna make our, our jumper right across here. And we'll use a scotch lock for that too. And then we'll go back on across. Okay, make sure you got plenty of room. Now we're leaving this loose for now. We'll go ahead and attach this to the floor for a permanent install once we get done rounding the wires. And while we're at it, we'll go ahead and tape up our connections. At this point now, we can go ahead and zip tie our wires to whatever we want, probably use some loom clamps, and we should be good to go. Then all I have to do next is go ahead and put the seven pole on the wire up front. So now, we'll go ahead and just get rid of our four pole, and we're gonna add our seven pole to it. Go ahead and take apart the seven pole and run it through the inside out. We've got our four wires for our lights and our ground. And then we'll run our blue wire from our brakes. Then we're going to strip these and install ring terminals to make our connections to the seven pole itself. We'll go ahead and hook up our wires to the seven pole. Now it's not going to be color for color on a few of them, but it will be, on our, in this case, blue to blue, because blue will be brakes on a seven pole. We're gonna hook up right turn, and that's going to be green on trailer wiring, and on the seven pole, it's gonna be brown. All right, we'll do a brown wire, which is running lights, and it'll be green on our seven pole. Yellow is gonna be left turn on our wire harness, and it's gonna be red on the seven pole. With our white wire, with the ring terminal, we'll go ahead and attach it to the ground here. And we'll just go ahead and put the loom back into place. Let's go ahead and put the wheels back on and then we'll apply power and give it a shot and see what happens. All right, got it spin. Let's go ahead and apply power. We'll pull 12 volts and see what we get. When to hit it. One more time, off. On. And there you have it for converting this old trailer from hydraulic brakes over to electric brakes.